Okay. Uh, vocabulary review. How can you tell whether fractions are equivalent fractions? Who can share with the class their answer? Yes, young man. Mm, no, not quite, because I can give you an example of a fraction where the numerator is bigger than the denominator. I think you're, you're thinking of something else. Does, any, can you, does anybody know what he's thinking about when the numerator is bigger than the denominator? Uh, Mr. Harrington, what's going on? That's an improper fraction. Okay. We're talking about equivalent fractions, fractions that are, they look different, but they mean the same thing. I'll give you an example. A half, 10 twentieths, right? 10 twentieths, a half. Okay. Those are equivalent, right? But they're written differently. Okay. So who can answer this? Can somebody share with the class? Teray? Okay, a lot of students were saying that this morning, and I think you're on the right track, but not quite what we're looking for. Rehan? You can tell from the equivalent fraction if you can multiply both numbers the same. Like, for example, 24 times, like, 2 is 48, and 12 times 2 is 24. Okay, so you're talking about factors of those numbers. I think we're still, we're still not quite there. Bokar? Um, two fractions that have the same value? Mm, you guys are kind of in the right ballpark. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call one more person, and then I'm going to show you the answer. Yep. If they're the same when they're in simplest form? Nice. That's exactly what I'm looking for. If you get the two fractions in simplest form, and they're equal. So my answer, in simplest form, they are the same. OK? You, just, you said the same thing differently. That's exactly correct. Okay, so you see how you guys are kind of in the same ballpark, but not quite. Okay, that's what we want. Okay, um, now two, three, four, and five. Are we going to have the same answers? No. No, because every fraction has, is there a limited number of equivalent fractions when I have a fraction? Yeah. No. No, we, we can always come up with more, right? So can some, but you know what? I noticed from the homework, some of you guys were, showing a fraction and you're showing the work and you're showing you're dividing it by a number, that's something else. So if, if I circled some of your work and put an exclamation mark over it, you guys were trying to show your work, but you're showing something else. When you show your work for this, um, you can do it this way. And it's how I'm modeling what's in the book. Somebody, first of all, give me an equivalent fraction to 16 twentieths. Give me two. Go ahead. Uh, two? Mm -hmm. Give me two for this. I think it's two for each. OK. Um, Four fifths. Let's talk about four fifths. These are equivalent fractions. How did you get four fifths? Oh, um, I divided by four. Divided the numerator and the denominator by four. Excellent. And you see how I'm, I'm just trying to write a note like, hey, I'm dividing the numerator by four, I get four. Okay? Mm -hmm. I'm not really dividing the fraction by four. That's something else. We're going to learn about multiplying fractions and dividing fractions. So some of you guys were writing something we haven't got to yet. You might have got to it before, but not this year. OK, can you give me another equivalent fraction, Goldis? 32 and 40. 32 40. fortieths. And how did you get that fraction? What did you do for that? Um, I multiplied 16 twentieths uh, by 2 twos. OK, so you multiply the numerator and the denominator by 2. So 20 times 2 gives me 40. And then 16 times 2 gives me 32. OK? OK, some of you guys showed your work this way. Great. Some of you guys showed it another way. It means something different. I just want you to be careful about that. All right, for number three, let's go ahead and take a look at number three. Can I get somebody to share two answers for number three? Somebody I haven't heard from yet. Uh, young man, way in the back, could you repeat your name? Because I'm trying to remember your name. Jonathan. Jonathan. Jonathan, can you give me two equivalent fractions? Um, Three-fourths. Three-fourths. That's good. And what did you use as a factor to take you from? 15 twentieths to 3 fourths? 5. Very good. So for the numerator, you did you divide or multiply? Divide. divide. Very good. So I divided by 5. 15 divided by 5 is 3. And 20 divided by 5 gave me 4. And then can you give me another equivalent fraction? 30 over 40, right? That's good. And how did you go from this fraction to this equivalent fraction? Very good. You multiply the numerator and the denominator by 2 times 2 times 2. Okay. 
two example two equivalent fractions here. Justin, can you help me out? Okay, twelve eighteenths. Very good. And how'd you get from six ninths to twelve eighteenths? Times two, good. Times two. And can you give me another equivalent fraction? Two thirds. And how'd you get two thirds? Nice. Divide by three. Divide by three. Very good. Okay. Um, we have one more example. Who's got who's got this last one? This Kute in the back. Go ahead. So we got one fifth. Nice. Uh, and that fraction is actually simplest form, right? Okay, because the numerator and the denominator, the GCF is what? One. The only common factor is one, so um, that's simplest form. And you can verify that with the other ones too. So, uh, Miriam, what did I do to go from 10 fiftieths to 1 fifths? Divide both the numerator and denominator by one. Nice. Okay, and I need one more equivalent fraction. What's your, your second equivalent fraction? Over 100. 20 over 100. And how did you do that? I divided. Divided? There you go. Times two. Times two. Okay. Now, I have some more right here. So you might see that some of your answers are reflected. But these are sample answers. That means there's, there's many different answers for each of these problems. Okay? So if you didn't see uh, one, if, you, if you're missing some, maybe you see them here. But there are many more. Any questions about the warm-up? Yes. So you said that you cannot like put like this like sixteen twenty eight and then divide it by four four and you have to put it like that. So yeah, because what you're saying means something different. Because when we divide fractions, that's something completely different. Okay. And when we get to that, I'm going to remind you of this conversation we had. Okay. okay? I'm going to say, remember what I told you, and then it'll make sense why I wanted to show it this way. Okay, but we're not there yet. Okay. So that's, that's exactly right. That's exactly what I was talking about. OK, moving right along. Can I get somebody to read what you'll learn, new vocabulary, and then why learn this? Can I get somebody to read that? Somebody I haven't heard from. Mr. Osmond, thank you. Can you use your, your loudest voice possible without yelling? Mm -hmm. Delicatessen. You may add for half a crown. The scales on the deli often use decimal numbers. You can convert between fractions and decimals to make sure you are receiving the correct amount. You write a fraction of the decimal by dividing the numerator by the denominator. The decimal that stops and terminates is the terminating decimal. Okay, so first thing we're going to talk about is a terminating decimal. Have you ever gone to the train? What do they call the train? Or have you ever flown out of the airport? What do you call that? Airport, terminal, train station, sometimes called the terminal. It's like the beginning or the end of your trip. Okay, so think about that. I'm trying to get you some words to kind of remember. Terminal or terminal illness means it's coming to an end. Okay, terminate to end, right? Okay, so a terminating decimal means a decimal that has an ending to it. Got it? So I've already covered a little bit this in the last unit. Do you guys remember how we talked about converting from a fraction to a decimal. You guys remember that? So let's go ahead and do this and see if you remember. Um, I'm going to kind of walk you through it. So you're often using math in other subjects, um, physics, chemistry. Here's an example um, where we see it. We're talking about gravity. The pull of gravity is weaker on the moon than on the Earth. The fraction 4 25ths represents the ratio of the moon's gravity to the Earth's gravity. Write this fraction as a decimal. What's the first step in writing as a decimal? Can somebody share with the class what's on my first step? Do you guys remember from before? Uh, somebody I haven't heard from yet. Zainab, what's the first thing I need to convert this to a decimal? has to do with the house. Do you remember what I said about the house? 
I'm going to call on your neighbor to help out. Mr. Harrington. Right, if you're on the bottom, you're, you're outside the house. Because being on the bottom, we don't like that. And we don't like to be left out, right? But that's what the bottom is, you left out. If you're on top, you're in. Being on top is a good thing. You want to be in. Being in is a good thing. Being on top is a good thing. So let's rewrite this fraction. And I'm going to try to color code it for 20 fifths. OK, so here we have my fraction. I need to go ahead and write this into my long division. So we're in, on top, on the bottom, we are out. OK, does everybody see how I set that up? Now, obviously, there isn't a multiple of 25 that goes into 4, right? So if there isn't a multiple, actually, 0 times 25 gives us something that will go that's less than 4. So that's kind of how we're going to start out. I'm going to put a decimal here, and I'm, I'm just going to add some. I might need them. I might not. I might need to add more. Do you guys remember what that's called when we're adding zeros here? It gives it annex. Annexing zero. That's how the book describes it. Annexing zeros. So I might have added too many zeros. I might not. We'll find out. So does 25 go into 4? No. no. So what do we put above the 4? Zero. zero. What else do I do before I proceed? Decimal. The decimal. I got to do what with the decimal? Going up. I need to bring it straight up. Does 25 go into 40? How many times? One, one time? Yes. Right. Two would be too many because 50 is too much, right? So one times 25, 25. Let's subtract that. 40 take away 25 is what? 15. Now what do I do? I heard it. Bring down the zero. How many times will 25 go into 150? Six. Six. Very good. Right? You know how I like to think of that? 25 is like a quarter. That's like a dollar fifty. How many quarters are needed to get a dollar fifty? Six, Yay. right? So I got a buck fifty. And do I have anything left over? This no. I'm done. You're done I don't need those zeros. Okay. Now I'm going to show you. This is one strategy. I'm going to show you another strategy. Sometimes this strategy is nice. It's it's a fast way to get to your answer. Sometimes it's not. So here's my other strategy. And this ties in very nicely with the warm up. So place value. You guys remember we talked about place value. What's the first place value to the right of the decimal? Tenths. Move over two places. What is that place value? Hundreds. Move over three places. What is that? Thousands. So let's take this fraction. And we're going to rewrite the fraction so that we have the denominator we want that's equivalent to 4 25ths. So we're going to take the same fraction, 4 25ths. And we need to write an equivalent fraction. But my equivalent fraction, I really want it to be a power of 10. Not just any power of 10. I'm going to choose 100. Okay. What factor takes me from 25 to 100? Four. So whatever I do in the denominator times four, I got to do in the numerator times four. So what's my numerator going to be? Sixteen. Now, what is this fraction? Sixteen. What is that number? Sixteen hundredths. Sixteen hundredths. Right? Yes, Teray. That's going to be my denominator, right? We're going to see some examples like that, so that's, that's good. And I like that you guys read ahead, because that, that gets more out of our lesson when I go through it, because you can, then I could help you iron out some kinks if you didn't get it on your own. OK? So moving along. Now, that was the example I did with you. Here's the example you're going to do on your own. I need you to try. Try. Almost everybody's getting started. I don't see everybody's pencil moving. Don't try to do it mentally. Try to actually try and do it so you have it in your notes.
most everybody's done. Is there somebody out there that would like to share their answer with us? Somebody, Jose, what did you get for your answer? Nice. Is that what you guys got? Okay. So let's walk through it because I want to make sure it's in the notes. So we have five eights, and five is on top, so it's in the house, right? Eight is on the bottom, so it's outside the house. Add some decimals here. I don't know if we're going to need three. We might need more. We might need less. Let's check it out. So does eight go into five? No. 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 So I put a zero, bring the decimal up. Does eight go into 50? Yes. Yes. How many times? Six. Six. And what's six times eight? 48. 48. Subtract off. Very good. I heard it. That's a two. Now I got to drop down my zero. How many times will eight go into 20? Two. Twice. Two times eight is what? 16. 16. Subtract that. What do we get? Four. Four. I got another zero to bring down. How many times eight go into 40? Five. Five times. And this is what I call a terminating decimal. It ends. OK? There's an ending to it. That is the answer. OK? That is exactly the answer. Are we good? Yep. Moving right along. Any questions about that? We're going to get to what you're talking about in a moment. So can I get somebody to read with the class? Uh, this next definition right here. Yes. Yeah. With the same block of digits, it will eventually reach the bell end. The decimal is in a digit decimal. And we do not drop or increase one or more digits. OK. Be careful. Know the difference between a pattern and a repeating pattern. OK? That's where you'll see on the assessments, they'll try to trick you. And we'll see in a little bit what I'm talking about. So if you look at the first number, Five and three, five, 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 five. It goes on forever. You'll never finish writing this number. You understand? So instead of trying to write the number out forever, because it would you would never finish writing the number, in math we have a way to represent that with that little bar above the number that repeats. So you guys see that after this three we see a five, and then it's just five the rest of the way, right? You see that? And this shouldn't be new to you. But if it isn't, do you guys understand? OK. So 5 is the digit that repeats. Yes? Uh, it is possible to have what they call a block that repeats. OK? And I think the next example will kind of illustrate what your question is about. If you take a look at this next number, 0 and 1717. One, I can't even say what the place, because I don't know what my last place value because it goes on forever, right? So 17 is the number that repeats. Do you see that? So that is the block of numbers. You can have larger blocks of numbers that repeat. Okay, so in this case, we don't need to write 17, 17, 17, 0 and 17, 17. You don't, you don't need to write that out. We can just say, hey, 0 and 17 and put a repeating bar above the 17. Do you understand? So this, if I made a stamp of this 17, I can make the rest of the number by stamping 17. Do you understand? Just like the 5, I can just write 5.3 and just keep stamping 5s. 5 is the part that I would put the bar above the stamper if we think about something. Right. No, because if you have, let me see if I understand your question. If you have two. 6, and you're saying 5, 5, 5, and then we got a 4 here? Yeah. That's not repeating. Yeah. No, you have some numbers here that repeat, but the repeat would go on forever. Got it? That's not repeating. You have some numbers that repeat, but repeating would go on forever. And I think when we work out this example, you'll understand how you'll know it's repeating. So now, your question I think will be answered with this next problem. Let's go ahead and do this next problem. Okay, Write it as a decimal. And when you identify the pattern, 
then you'll know where to put the bar. Okay? I need you guys to do it at this point. And this is pretty easy stuff. I need you to do. You're doing a lot of dances right now. Okay. So just sit there without, without, without the club, if you don't mind. If you want to work ahead, that way when we get to it. If you've already finished the first example, go ahead and do the, the other example. So I'm going to work out the example with you. That's the one I want you to do on your own. This is pretty easy, and I know you guys, this is, we'll just do one, OK? I'll do that one. You guys can share with me the answer for the next one. And then if we're all in agreement, we'll just move on to the next example. So first of all, for this top one, in the house is going to be three. Out of the house is 11. And Leah, did you, did you, do you understand what I'm talking about now that you've worked one out? Right? So if I put my decimal here, does 11 go into 3? Yes. No. no. Put my decimal up. Does 11 go into 30? Yes. yes. How many times? Twice. Twice. So that's 22. Subtract that off. I get 8. Seven. That goes in there 7. 77. So then how many times is, that's going to be 77. Subtract 3. Bring down my 0. How many times does 11 go into 30? 2. Two. And then do you see what's going to happen? Yes. It's going to be 22 again, 8. And then we have this pattern repeating over again where I have 7, and it's going to be 77, and then 3. OK, are we good? OK, so hopefully you guys started on this um, next problem. Oops. And what did you guys get for this answer, if you don't mind me asking? Did you guys have time to do this one? That was a pretty easy write. But how do we write that? Like, how would I write this answer right here? My answer would be what? 0 and 27 bar over the top of 27. Right? Are we good? And you're telling me that for this answer, the answer is what? OK, that was a pretty easy do done deal. Um, just a repeating sign. Repeat sign. OK. <laughs> Any questions? Daniel, can you do me a favor? Could you slide up one? Actually, um, India, does anybody sit behind you? Okay, could you grab no that's your seat now. Could you grab could you grab your 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 stuff? Daniel. Daniel, could you sit between Miriam and Athila? Thank you. Okay, shh moving right along. Now, this goes back to what Therese said earlier about picking picking the place value to be your denominator. So Therese kind of talked a little bit about this type of problem. OK, can I get somebody to read the top part? Bokar, go ahead. OK, so here's my number. This is the whole number part. This is the decimal portion. Do you see that part? That's my decimal right here between these two numbers. Now, what's the place value of 5, the, the digits farthest to the right? Thousands. 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 Now, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, in a multiple choice quiz or test, they'll give you that answer, and you'll be wrong, because that's not going to be the best answer. Right? So 
Some of you guys know how to get to the best answer. How do we get to the best answer? Simplify. Right. So let's go ahead and simplify this. What kind of number is this? What, or what is this thing right here? It's a mixed number. It's a mixed number because it's, whole, it's a whole and fraction put together, right? So the one's not going to change, but the fraction portion is going to change. And what is a common factor? What's the greatest common factor of these two numbers? Five, five is a factor, but it's not the greatest common factor. Who says 25? If you said 25, you're correct. And if you forgot how to find the GCF, go review my video or my notes. I told you guys how to do it. I gave you a cookbook method to get there. I'm not going to get into that right now. We're going to divide by 25. And when we divide the numerator and denominator by 25, what do we get back? I hear 13. And what's the denominator going to be? Well, how many times does 25 go into 100? Four. Add the zero, it's, it's 40. So just a strategy for mental math, 25 goes into 104. Add that zero, put the zero into 40. Got it? All right, shh. Uh, the plan, I, I'm going to have to adjust the seating arrangement again. Is that what I have to do? Because there's a lot of playing. I need you to reel it in. Now. If you look at these three problems, you should be able to really quickly knock these out. A lot of you are really close on the right track or you nailed it. Let's review this one. This is the easy one. I'm hoping that when I show you this one, you'll have it down. So my whole number is the number right just to the left of my decimal, right? So the whole number is going to be three. Then I got to free out my, my decimal, my fraction part. So I look at this number right here. Six, that goes in my numerator. What's my denominator going to be? Ten. Ten. How do we choose ten? ten? Because six is in the tenth place. Now, you've got, to me, you've got the hardest part out of the way. But this isn't the right answer. Because now I need to simplify that fraction. And what's the GC, uh, what's the greatest common factor of six and ten? Two. 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 So if I rewrote this, I would divide the numerator by two, and I divide my denominator by two. And what would I get 
if I divide the numerator and the denominator by 2? Three fifths. Three fifths. Are we good? OK. Daniel, do you see you just need that one little piece? You're almost there. But we wouldn't have got there if you hadn't have tried. Do you see what I'm saying? On the daily, I need you guys to try. I'm really encouraged by what I see in homework with you guys. Homework looks really good for most of you. Some of you guys still got to step it up a little bit. OK? Math continues to, continues to get more difficult. And so what I'm trying to get you guys to do is just good study habits for math, OK? And you'll see what I'm talking about when we start doing solving equations and all that neat stuff. All right. So what's the whole number going to be for this mixed number? Two. Two. What's the fraction part going to be? 48. 48 over what? 100. Why did we choose 100? Because the furthest to the right, the number furthest to the right is in the hundredth place. Do we got that now? Are we good? OK. And am I done? No. No, I'm not done. Uh, you guys know how to simplify that. I'm not going to dwell over that. You know how to get to this point? OK. The lesson for simplifying fractions, that was, that was a few days ago. All right, this one over here. This was the most challenging of the bunch. Two, whole number. What's the numerator of my fraction? Oh, my bad. You're right. Oh, man, it's a struggle. I'm already thinking of the weekend. This is if you're like Friday today, right? Yes. Yes. 364. What's the denominator going to be? 1,000. 1,000. How do we come up with 1,000? Because four is in the thousands place. Is that the right answer? No. No. It's about, it's about a step or two away from the right answer, but that's correct. OK, you need to simplify that. And I'll put those answers up on the message board. I want to get through to the lesson, so I'm going to skip along. So ordering fractions. Remember when we had order, compare and order um, fractions earlier? Now we're con comparing and ordering fractions and decimals. So to compare fractions and decimals, you can write the decimals as fractions or the fractions as decimals. You can decide which is easier for different numbers, sets of numbers. So here we have a set of numbers. I wouldn't want to convert these all to fractions, because in order to compare them, they all need to have the same denominator. So to me, it'd be easier to do what? Take care of the one fraction, make it a decimal. Now we're going backwards. You guys remember we went from a decimal to a mixed number. Now we're going from a mixed number to a decimal. So first thing, hands down, the easy part, the 2. Now I need to figure out the decimal part. OK, so 6 is in the house, 18 is out of the house. How many times does 18 go into 6? Zero. Bring my decimal up. How many times does 18 go into 60? Three times 8? 24. Carry the 2. 3 times 1? Plus the 2. So subtract that. What do I get back? Uh, what's happening? So we're going to get a pattern, but we don't need to continue. So watch, here's my number. I don't need 33, just put the bar. You're trying to write too much. That's all you need. Are we good? OK. If I was to arrange these least to greatest and put them on the number line, here's what it would look like. OK. 2, 2, and 3 tenths repeating. 2 and 55 hundredths. It said least to greatest, right? So least would be, or greatest to least. That's, that's what you have to be careful for. Listen to me. They're going to set you up, and they'll mix that all throughout your quizzes. Greatest to least, least to greatest. And if you're not paying attention, you're going to do all the work, and you're going to pick the wrong one. Got it? Be careful. I've seen so many students get all of this work correct. And then they answer the wrong question because they thought, thought it said least to greatest or they thought it said greatest to least. OK, read the question. Read the full question. Did you think I was going to say something else? No, no. I wasn't. OK, good, because I, I know you guys would definitely tell on me. Yes? No, 
No, no, because um, this is almost two and a half. This is less than two and a half. That's why they said use the number line to place it. So that, that helps you visualize where they are in, in the scheme. Because remember, as, you, as you're farther to the right, you're larger. OK, so this is something they add in the book to help you visualize what's larger. It's not because this has more digits that it's a bigger number. It's because you can cover that around to the nearest place, make that 2.6. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So if that helps you out, then think of it that way. If you need to sort out and have them have the same number of significant figures. You'll hear more about that in, in chemistry, significant figures. OK, so moving along. I'm not going to spend time on this. Well, actually, I do want you guys, how much time we have? No, we have a little bit of time. OK, can I get you guys to do one of these numbers? Either or. Do this one. Actually, the first three rows do 1 and 3 eighths. The second, the last three rows, 4, 5, and 6, do 1 and 7 fifteenths. You're going to do this one. These rows right here. Those rows over there, do this one. OK, you guys in the first three rows, it looks like almost all of you are done. What's the first, what's the whole number going to be? One. The decimal part, I need to rewrite 3 eighths. How do I rewrite 3 eighths as a decimal? What goes in the house? Three. And eight is outside of the house? OK. Now, let's go ahead and figure this out. How many times eight going to three? Zero. Zero. Bring my decimal up. How many times eight going to 30? Three times. Three times eight is 24. Subtract that. I get a six. Bring down my zero. How many times eight going to 60? Seven. Seven, Seven. Seven times eight is 50. What? Six. six. Subtract. I get a four. Bring down the zero. Eight goes into 40. How many times? Five. Five, Five times eight is 40. Is this a repeating decimal? No. What type of decimal is it? Terminating. Terminating decimal. OK. The other group that had this number, this number is 1. And then the decimal part, we have to do 7's in the house, 15's out of the house. I got my decimal, and then some zeros. And then 15 goes into 7 how many times? 0. 15 goes into 70 how many times? 4. 4 times 15 is what? Subtract that, I get 10. Bring down a 0. How many times does 15 go into 100? Six. Six. Six times 15 is 90. 90. Subtract, I get 10. Bring down another zero. And then we're going to get six, because that ought to give me 90. And then we have 10 again. And that's repeating. So my answer for this is going to be four, six, repeating over the six. Now, if I put this on a number line, just so you see, that's the answer that this group got. Here's the answer, 1 in 375 thousandths, uh, 1 in 46 hundredths, 6 repeating. And this is what they gave us, 1 in 862 thousandths. That's it on the number line. But that's least to greatest on the number line. They wanted greatest to least, so you got to flip the order backwards. So flipping it backwards, that's your answer. See how you got to read the question? Be careful. OK, moving along. I'm not going to do this because this is the same skill I showed you earlier. Converting from a fraction to a decimal so you can compare your numbers. 
You guys go ahead and do that on your own. I'm going to go ahead and go to the end of the lesson. What is the difference between a terminating decimal and a repeating decimal? Yes, Miriam. A terminating decimal is a stop, and a repeating decimal repeats the same number, group or group of numbers over and over. Right, group, or I think they call it block of digits, group of digits that repeat without end. So a terminating decimal stops, whereas a repeating decimal has a block of digits that repeat without end. Reasoning, is a remainder of zero the same as no remainder? Yes, yes or no? Yes. yes. In each case, a number is divisible by the other. OK, moving along. Write each decimal as a mixed number. Can you guys go ahead and write these as mixed numbers? You don't necessarily have to get them simplified, but go ahead and write them as a mixed number, as a decimal. Yeah, as a mixed number. Write them as mixed numbers. Because we're short on time, I don't need you to get them in simplest form. Just write them as a mixed number. Quickly, quietly, see so you guys start packing up too soon. I want to finish this. Write them as a mixed number. Hurry up. Come on. Each should be done. Don't pack up until it's time to pack up. That's when I tell you to pack up. Put these in your notes, please. OK, it shouldn't have taken you. This is not going to stay the seating arrangement tomorrow. There's too much playing going on right here. This is the answer. This one was easy. That one, 1, 375 over 1,000. It simplifies to that. This is just going to be 44 over 100. Simplifies to that. And then. Is this a repeating decimal? This is a trick question. You'll see this in a quiz, I promise you. Quiz or a test, you'll see something like this. Is that repeating or not? No. Not. Could I take an ink stamper of one, a part of this and keep making the rest of the number? Yes. What's happening? There's not a block because the blocks are changing, right? What's happening? The zeros between the threes are getting, there's more of them every time the three happens, right? You understand? That's not repeating. That's not a repeating block. The blocks don't repeat. They change. So it's not repeating. OK, and then this was the last question. You guys, I already did that a couple times in the lesson. That's it. Pack your things. You have a quiz. You have a quiz. I'm not a quiz. You have a quick check to do over the weekend and book work. Line up, please, quickly, quietly. Thank you.